And welcome to another episode of Black Coffee and Crime. Thank you guys for joining us for another week when we talk about true crime, current events, and other BS that we find on the Al Gore's internet. Um, my name is Brandy. We also have Jackie and Brandy W. Um, this this is your panel every week. You join us. Thank you, guys. So thank you. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the way we do things here, excuse me. I got something in this cup. We have regular conversations, unscripted conversations about whatever our subject matter is for the week. This week, we're going to be talking about the very tragic case of three-year-old Serenity Williams, and also some child cases that uh, that we talked about briefly before. We'll kind of give you some updates on that. Um, but we are going to start with uh, the rules. We haven't done this in a while. Uh, we're not law enforcement professionals. We may misspeak. Um, we may not bring all of the information on the cases that you know. However, if you do know some information that we don't talk about on the cases, let us know on Instagram, Facebook, um, at Black Coffee and Crime, or you can hit us up at info at Black Coffee and Crime, or of course, comment on our YouTube page on each episode. Um, always be respectful. Um, always be respectful. Always be respectful. Because if I can't, if you say something disrespectful in the comments and I want to kind of clap back, but I can't, so I just kind of block you. That's just the way that works. And um, if I catch her before she block you, I'm clapping. She gonna clap it. So I'm 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 trying to be an evolved and a better person in 2021. <laughs> and Jackie said no. So I think that is me being a better person. <laughs> Let it out. Just let it out. But that's the way this works. Um, where it's just unscripted. We're having conversations. <clears throat> but again, if we may speak or we um, inadvertently hurt someone's feelings, or especially if you're family or friends of some of the people that we talk about, you know, just let us know. Be respectful, and um, we'll go from there. Um, church announcements. Any announcements this week? Uh, anything y'all want to talk about? Bring to the Anybody on the sick and shut in and need a prayer? Well, you know, I'm always on the sick and shut in. So include um Brandy in in your prayers this week, as always. Um I, we haven't talked about the prison ministries in a while. <laughs> We have not resumed the prison industry, the prison uh, ministry. We won't be doing that. Uh, they're still under lockdown. Uh, according to the people on the inside, they ain't allowing nobody in. So we ain't going to try. And if you ain't got your shot, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going anywhere. So um, get your shots. Yeah. Just, just you continue know. to write your letters. Yes, write your letters, but don't lick the stamps. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there's you know, as far as the shot goes, you know, it's now available for anyone over the age of 12 in the U.S. Um, there's been some countries where there's crazy spikes in new cases, especially like India. Um, Brandy said that there was a spike. In, no, my daughter was telling me there was a spike in uh, New Zealand who had no cases almost for the wow. entire year. But there's a spike, been a spike in New Zealand. It has no doubt to tourism being open to tourism now but yeah if you want the shot go get it if you don't don't period i'm not advocating that you do it you grown do it if you want to if you don't don't all right so um that's it for the church announcements oh uh click like follow what are you doing uh i just had a phrase on the inside that i couldn't keep to myself <laughs> you had a whole praise break and I missed it. Yeah. I didn't that, have an uh, I didn't have an opportunity to mute you. That's why you didn't want me to see it. <laughs> it was on the inside. Mm. You felt the quickening. Yeah. You felt the quickening. The yeah. Holler, stirring up. Deep. In the depths of my soul. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Keep the singing to a minimum though. 
Keep that phrase. Y'all be missing out on my A and B selections before we uh record. Mm -hmm. Y'all really missing out on your blessing because of you really are. You're missing out on a, a blessing. I think that's a whole different show though. I don't think that this Missing out on a blessing because Bran is just she's she's a mean usher. She she didn't want to come get your gun with that paper like this. In the middle of the <laughs> walking up there. And you gotta have the you gotta have the other hand behind your back too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my mom is my mom is that usher. That's why I know what they like. She's that usher. That was Miss Alice. We had a, the, the mean usher. She's the mean usher. Miss Alice was, I kid you not. Miss Alice was my cafeteria lady. She also worked with my mom at a liquor store, and she was the mean usher at my church. Oh yeah, she was. She she had a whole lot of meanness on the yeah. inside. She kicked me out the cafeteria because I wouldn't eat the food. Uh. You know, Dang. you know, back in the day, you know, you were supposed to, when we were in school, all the kids ate, whether you have money or not, everybody ate. Mm -hmm. Well, I would always question what the food was. Like, what is that? I don't, I don't like that. Can I have, like, I was in there like it was a restaurant. Like, can I have? And she was in there with her swollen ankles, shuffling across that floor. Miss Alice was actually <laughs> a slim, slender woman, but, um, she still could have swollen ankles. She probably did. I think she was too mean for the water. I think she was dehydrated. Her damn she didn't mean. have that much water left in her body. But she kicked me out of the, um, the cafeteria. Because I asked her what's chicken fried. But where do you go? I had to go outside. She didn't let me eat. You want to go eat no way. I know. I was I, saying, I mean, I mean, you're not going to eat it no way. That's what I was thinking. Like, she's not going to eat it anyway, but. <laughs> Was she a Danny Green slipper or was she one of them old school mom slippers that just had the part that goes over your foot? And this is she out. She was an old school mom slipper. So she, hadn't, she hadn't graduated to the Danny Green. She had the Danny Green. No. So she just had them old school pink ones. You, just <laughs> like, <laughs> you can get from Riley for like a dollar. Oh, I hate oh, them slippers. So, the house slipper. She wasn't, she wasn't Danny Green ready for them yet. With the open toe on it? The open toe ones. Um, the ones with the chicken grease and be on the top. Mm -hmm. so, and it's a, it she is got a powder flower. Way up here. Huh? She put powder way up here? She did. Yeah. She did. Yeah. Um, because, of course, this was the day before uh, Black women were able to really get color matched. And uh, Miss Alice would have a very deep, dark complexion. So she had. She had a line. <laughs> All the way across. She was, you know. No, yeah. I'm talking about some talcum. No, she didn't have the talcum powder. The talcum. Oh, yeah. She didn't have the talcum powder. Speaking, I'm glad you said. Uh, oh, some jokes. I'm glad you said something about talcum powder. We are going to include this in the church announcements, y'all. And I know that for the people who hate to hear us talk and not talk about the subject, you just go get on your nerves. But it is what it is. Skip to like minute 30. And then you get to the subject. But listen, guess what is back on the market, y'all? What? In the tag. If you are over the age of 37. What? <laughs> if you are 37 and above, you know what the yellow bottle at Thrifty's, Rite Aid, CVS, Walgreens, Eckert's, Kmart, Walmart, and Target. Not Eckert's. Eckert's. This food talking about she gonna get some. The tech, y'all. I'm I'm on a mission. If you get that, go ahead and pick you up some Danny Greens. You got enough points. I need the gene protect. I mm. need. We was talking about the other day if we got enough. If y'all don't know what Dan Daniel Greens, I call them Danny Greens. Daniel Green slippers are. I know your granny. <clears throat> um, so look up. Some Daniel Green slippers and know what we're talking about. Now, if, if your grandma was on the, the mother's board, the usher board, the women's auxiliary board, 
and the treasury, <laughs> she had some Daniel Green. So, yes. But and Gina Tate is back on the market next week. I will I'm gonna be on a mission to find it. So hopefully next week I will be able to. Lord Jesus. Yeah, you better wear your Danny Greens. With my here. Daniel Green. I already told you the ones I like. Um I already have my I already have my Daniel Green set up for when I get enough points to get them. So <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna be on a mission. Oh, Jesus. Those are the announcements as follows because we will talk about Daniel Greens and Gene Tate for out. Um Govern yourselves accordingly. Please obey your ushers and respect your pastor. All right. So last week, um, we briefly mentioned. Uh, okay, so last week we talked briefly about, uh, we mentioned um, Cash Karen, the little boy, the little four-year-old who had been found in Grand Prairie, Texas, in the middle of the street in a pool of blood. But something that Brandy and I had talked about as well was whether or not the pandemic had bred a lot of child murders during this year, since March of last year, 2020. And I was like, yeah, I think so. Because it just seems like there's just a bucket full every single week you hear about these child murders every week. And then the subject matter today is already um, Richardson, another, you know, tragic child murders. But it just seems like every week there's like, more and new. Um, an update on a, a story that we briefly talked about with Brescia. Um, um, a little girl from Iowa, her name was uh, Abricia. She's 10 years old and she was kidnapped last summer, like in June or July. She went missing. Her mom let her visit her half brother and his father who was a convicted, no, it was her father, her half-brother and her father. He was a convicted sex offender, so of course he was one of the prime suspects. Um, it took the police in Davenport, Iowa, about three days, three or four days, to start a search for her, to do Amber Alert search. Then, 10 days later, they called the search off. They didn't say why they called the search off. They just stopped, and the case just kind of stymied for a while. Well, she was found by some fishermen. Um, last week, no, on, I want to say Cinco de Mayo, so May 5th or thereabouts, um, there was a sex offender named Henry Dinkins, who was named as the prime suspect and arrested. Um, he was someone who had been recently let out of jail on a 10-year, uh, sentence. Her name actually was Agresha Terrell. And it was a sex a sex offender who um, who was arrested uh, for killing. So yeah, it was Henry Earl Dinkins, this is People Magazine. Um, he had been a apparently a person of interest on the case from July of 2020, and he was recently arrested. But yeah, he had been um, let out early on his um, sex offender case. So um, unfortunately, that. Or glad that it wasn't her dad because it was looking like a strong case that maybe it was her dad because he was the last one to see her. Um, so yeah, he shot her. That's just horrible. Wait a minute. Is this? You gotta be kidding me. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> it was her stepfather. It was him. It was him. <clears throat> He's the father of her brother. Mm -hmm. And he shot her. Mm -hmm. She went to his house to spend the night. Or what, the, I, I was going to say, I thought it was. because I, 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 I could have swore I was reading something that said it wasn't him. And now that I'm going down the story, I'm like, wait a minute, that's the same guy. Yeah, because I remember we what talked about it. What did he spend the night over there for, though? 
because she wanted to see her brother. Oh. She wanted her brother to see her brother. house? He lived there with his father. See, in some of the first stories that we read back in July, it said that um, that Dinkins was her dad because mm -hmm. she, the mom had lived with him and she knew that he was a sex offender when she got pregnant with Frederick. How do you even... Mm, that's whole yeah, and that's what we were talking about during that episode was like how do you know that someone's a sex offender you have a child by them that's why i was so confused like okay they're saying that this is the half brother's father but i thought that i'm confused because i thought that they both they both have the same father but not the same mother mm -hmm. but they're making it seem like dinkins is her stepfather but i believe in some of the first stories that came out back in july they said that Dinkins was her dad and the son, her brother was his son, but not her mom's son. First of all, this half brother, half sister shit is confusing to me because we don't do that. Yeah. Right. In black communities, that's just your brother or your sister. Your sister. That's just so it. When it's just the, the half and quarter, and all, I, don't, I don't understand. But yeah, apparently it was him. How do you have a quarter of a, a sister? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we be dividing stuff up weird. I don't know. I don't even think of my sisters as my half. They're just my sisters. Like when people say that's your half sister, I'd be like, no, that's my sisters. Because my sister. I'm, not thinking, I'm not thinking half. I'm like, I grew up with them my whole life. It's my sister. Even my if sister. you grew up with them, that's still your sister. Like, I know, but I just don't. It just didn't even register to me that that would they would be considered my half sisters, yeah. even though. They're my half -sister. like I didn't even know what a half sister or brother was until I was in like in I think I was maybe fourth fourth grade and this girl at school said um something about a half brother or sister and I remember her name her name was Jennifer Babcock and um she said something about her half brother or sister so I took that home with me and I said that my oldest brother was a half brother boy. Mm -hmm. My mama couldn't reach out to strike me fast enough. Um, because I don't yeah, people do that when when I introduce my older sister, they go, oh, so that's your half sister? When I explain, okay, uh, they were like, Y'all the same mom. I'm like, Well, no, but it's my sister. They're like, Oh, so your half sister? No, that's it's my, my sister. Life. What kind of damn share parent? What, that's, what is that? That's love. It's my sister. We grew yeah. up together, she's lived with me all her life. It's my sister. Yeah. I don't know. So again, let me make this correction before someone corrects me rudely in the comments. <laughs> Henry Earl Dinkins is the person that they arrested for killing Frazier Terrell. Henry Earl Dinkins is her father, who was a sex offender, and also the father to her brother. Did the mama know he was a sex offender? Yes. yes. In those very first stories that we read, when I he knew. talked about the story, because I got the story from Alyssa Deep, my favorite source for all things criminal. Um, I got the story from Alyssa Deep, and in that article and in other articles, it said that he was her father, and the mom knew that he was a sex offender mm -hmm. when she had a child by him, and he had recently been released, and she still let her go over there. How you have and, sex with men? Yep. You never like to have sex with children, right? They because she he was accused of having sex with a with a minor under twelve, I believe, or something like that. A child, and, a baby, a baby. Yes, and she still let her go over there. And when she went missing, he, she was you know like around the corner in, in the apartments or whatever, and people were saying that they saw her get into a car, and it looked like one of the cars that he owned. But they could never prove that. See, I would have reported him and got the, the little boy, too. Well, I think the brother was like 15. Girl, uh, that don't mean he could have been up there messing with him, too. Like, I'll take him. Because his daddy, his daddy nasty. Maybe. But yeah. those are the, the kind of things that as a, as a parent, like, you you sent your child to this, you know, to their other parent, and they did this. 
So yeah. So I just wanted to make that that correction, correct myself. Yes. Or someone else can do it for me. Um let's talk about the little boy from from uh Grand Prairie. So this is the little boy who was found in the middle of the streets uh about two weeks ago, a week ago. Found in the middle of the street yeah, early in the morning about 5 a.m. Um, they didn't know how he got outside. He had been hit several times with a sharp object. Well, they did arrest Darian Brown. He was 19 years old. They arrested Darian Brown. They, they have video of Darian being in the room, in the child's room, taking him and then going back, possibly to take Cash's twin, but he didn't. But this is the confusing part. There's also video of the Miss Sherrod, the, the father's girlfriend's brother. There's also video footage of him in the room with the kids. Did you guys see that? No, but I when you told me when I seen who they arrested, which I'm thinking is probably the boy who was running into the woods, I was like, why would an 18 year old just randomly go in somebody's house and stab up a little kid. Like, right. And see, here's the thing. When they announced that there was a four-year-old child found in the middle street, they didn't announce the, the race of the child or the race of the suspect. You didn't know. They did not know. Even after you found out that the suspect was Darian Brown was a young black man, still didn't know the race of the child. Then when you found out it's a little white kid, you're like, what a minute. Right, because you. What is the motivation at this point? Right, because uh, you know. Him. Because they charged him with kidnapping and robbery. Uh, I think it was an aggravated robbery. Um, those were the initial charges. But did he didn't take anything other than the kid? The kid. Did mm -hmm. they upgrade? Have they upgraded the charges by now, or is it still the um, same? I don't think they've upgraded the charges as of yet. So that means they, they got some questions too then. <laughs> no, and, and like you, Brandy, my first thought was, oh, something is going on and they are not telling me yet. It's, it's going to be something because... Because the, <clears throat> the, uh, the brother of the girlfriend, okay, so the two children were, were staying with their father and the father's girlfriend. The mother of the children was not aware that the children had been left with the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know if the father was out of town working or whatever, he wasn't there. Her brother was. He claimed that he didn't know Darian. However, they went to school together. They did know each other. But again, what is the motive? Darian seemed very familiar with the house. And, the, uh, and that second twin seemed familiar with Darian. He seemed very familiar. When he saw him, when he woke up, any the, this is a black man and a white wife. <laughs> that child would have been hollow, terrified. When he woke up, he was just like, hey, yeah. Right. And there's other footage uh, from the neighbor's uh, surveillance camera of Darian um, walking through the alley up the driveway. Darian actually looks into the neighbor's backyard because they share a driveway. So the neighbor had was like, I've seen him here before. You know, so the neighbor has seen him there. So it's everybody's questions, but it's very suspicious. And in other videos, the people the people are trying to compare um the girlfriend's brother to the person in the video because they were like going off of mannerisms and um movements and all these little details, and they're like, that's not Darian, that's the other guy. Mm. So I don't it, know, if, I posted those videos to you guys in the group chat, but it looked like Darian to me. It looked like him to me. No. I mean, I haven't seen the, I didn't see a photo of the um, of the the, the brother. The brother. So I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. I just knew because my first thing was to look at the video and see if it looked like him. That's my natural. Let me. Well, my thing is he's not going to go like just go to somebody's house and pop in their window and take two little white kids like just willy nilly I'm gonna go ahead and unless he was hopped up on some kind of narcotic I'm not right 
Yeah, it's it's um <coughs> it's all suspect. I just sent the uh another video to y'all. So uh this of course is a ongoing case. We'll be posting videos to um Facebook and Instagram as they come up. Um other people will be posting other people's conspiracy theories because I'm gonna look and watch those too. Uh, I just think it's real suspicious. I'm really eager to find out what the motive behind taking this child out of his bed early in the morning, killing him and leaving him. Was this, you know, did somebody also want some money? Was it revenge? Um, was it insurance? What was it? Because he, he was supposed to come back and get the second baby. So he wasn't really, if you come back and get a second person, you're really not that in a, much of a hurry. Especially you're trying to rob somebody. You're not trying to really get away. You have, you know you have time. Mm -hmm. So we'll be uh, talking about that. Now, um, you guys sent, I don't know who sent it to me, either Jackie or Brandy. You guys sent me this story and it is absolutely There are a few things I think in this world that are truly, truly, truly evil. The story that y'all sent me, this is some Auschwitz yeah. and, and um, Doc how you know, this is the kind of stuff that they do when they were loading the Jews into the trains kind of stuff. Um, I don't know which one of y'all want to talk about this. Well, I can, I can talk about it. Um, I, well, the, there's a story and yeah, this guy's getting arrested and um, they pretty much accused, he had Ashley, his daughter, who was abused and killed, um, was, was murdered. <clears throat> so he carried his ashes, her ashes uh, with him and the cops accused it of being heroin and compensated. Matt, Matt, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. And compensated this poor man. Sure. They opened her ashes during the mm -hmm. arrest. Said that it was meth. Basically, emptied the ashes out, and he's like pleading with them, begging. Like, he's begging. It is horrible. Um, and they laugh. They laugh on the body cameras. You can, you can, you, they're laughing. And then they're like, oh, it's not mess. And they don't apologize. No. Nope. You just desecrated someone's remains. You, I don't know what kind of mess y'all have seen. I don't know what kind of mess. Well, they ain't never look like no age. I have never seen that that looks like ash. And I've no. seen human ashes before. And I've seen men. They don't they don't look alike. Nothing alike. And even after they tested it, they doubled down on it. That's the even crazier part. They tested it. They tested this. And they said no. And they still ashes. And they doubled down on it. That is pure. Evil. Yes. To get pleasure at bringing someone that low. That is evil. There, I will repost the video uh, if it allows me to, because sometimes it's an Instagram video, but sometimes Instagram will not allow me to repost any. Uh, so I will try to repost it to our page. Um, but if you haven't seen it, if this happened in Illinois, uh, two white cops and uh, African American gentlemen, and it is absolutely horrible. It will turn your stomach. Mm -hmm. And really, it doesn't matter that these are two white cops. It doesn't matter that this man is black. It just matters that this man was human and so was his daughter. And it would be just as bad if these were the white man, a Hispanic man, an Indian. It doesn't matter this is a human know. issue this is not a race issue They're, they might have been motivated to do this by race but as viewers as people watching this your reaction doesn't have anything to do with race your reaction has to do with humanity 
it, it's it's horrible, y'all. It's horrible. Yeah, I was in, I was in tears. I, I was just so heartbroken, especially when I wrote the red. You know, a little bit of the backstory of the ashes of his. I was just like, he, I just couldn't imagine that feeling. He probably felt so helpless. You know, it's bad enough he was already feeling helpless. That moment was probably the worst. Even dealing with what he dealt with, that has to be the worst moment ever. Because yeah. he was begging. I was like, oh my God. It was so horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Was horrible. I will try to repost that. Um, yeah. So if you haven't seen it, I, I'll just do my best to do that. All right, y'all. So let's talk about some more tragedy. To um, 2009 is when this story takes place in is it it's in South Carolina mm-hmm. happens in South Carolina where these two women Somerville in Somerville, South Carolina these two women brutally beat a three year old child for peeing on the floor The coroner said that the only parts of her body that went untouched were her armpits and the soles of her feet. On her death certificate, the cause of death is full body trauma, trauma. blunt force Mm -hmm. trauma. Full body blunt force trauma. Blunt force trauma, yep. Never heard that as a cause of death before. That's the first time I've seen full body blunt force trauma. And their story doesn't even line up with her injuries. So no one really knows what happened. No one, it's still a mystery because that's it, not what happened to her. That she didn't, it was just not that. You know, they were like, we just hit her with a belt a whole bunch of times. No, it was not just belt. What else did you do? And they have yet to say what else they did. They kept apologizing. The first story, the first story was she was sitting in a chair and she fell and hit her head. Yeah, and that's the original. 30 story. minutes yes. later, she wasn't breathing anymore. Yeah. yeah, that's the original. So the ladies who are the perpetrators, the baby's name was Serenity Richardson. And the ladies were Erica Butts, 23 at the time <laughs> of, the, of the murder, and Sh- uh, Shanita Cunningham, also 23 at the time of the murder. Miss Butts was the baby's godmother mother. and the best friend of her mother, of Aisha Richards. Aisha Richards. Mm-hmm. The story that they told, the official story that they told was. And, oh, and, and they, she was there. Serenity was there to spend some time with her, her with her godmother. She had been there since the end of October. She was just spending time with her godmother. You know how I think I was. Her mother was moving, so she basically mm-hmm. had her for a couple of weeks. You know, I'm going to go visit. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to help out the mother and, you know, watch the baby. You know, and then you come back. Well, you don't even come back. You get a call that your baby's dead. Mm-hmm. So this is my question. You know, there wasn't a whole lot. I read all the articles that I could read. Me too. I I want to know when did the girl is that's her girlfriend, right? The other girl, Shanita. They, yeah, yeah, they had some kind of relationship. When did she yeah. get into the to the uh, story as far as charges being put on her? Because I I just kept seeing Erica, 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 and I didn't well, see. Well, she once once they put okay. Let let's let's go back and paint a story, and then I'll get to that part. They. Claimed that she peed and that she was whipped with a belt and she hit her head several times in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tried to put her on ice in the bathtub to revive her because, of course, she they said that she was, you know, kind of lethargic and wasn't breathing right. So they tried to put her in the bathtub, but then she was dead. They called Miss Butts' mother from Goose Wait, and then they also tried bleach. Yes, they put bleach. They tried to, like, use bleach as, like, you know, smelling salts to kind of wake her up, which I never don't. Do I just that. thought that was so stupid. That I, I don't know if anybody's ever. That's not that. That's not a thing. Um. So, um, Shanita 
actually fled when she, when, mm -hmm. when she realized that that baby was dead. She left the state. Yes. That's why you don't, a lot of the stories don't mention her. She left the state and then she turned herself in. So yeah, yep. so she, mm -hmm. she left. Uh, Miss Butts was, uh, not keep saying Miss Butts, but Erica Butts, she was there when the police came and they noticed that that baby was, ice, of course, ice cold and rigor mortis had already set in. So she had been dead long enough for rigor mortis to set in. Um, but uh, Shanita Cunningham fled the state immediately. So and Erica did not call the cops. Yeah. No, she called her mama. Mm -hmm. and her, she didn't even tell her mama. She didn't tell her what was going on. The mama just kind of was like, well, what do I need to? I really didn't call about that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> like you said, Jack, it couldn't have been one single incident mm -hmm. where you beat <coughs> that baby in one day that bad. <coughs> I think that they were using that baby as a punching bag mm -hmm. for days. <laughs> or whatever amount of time. <coughs> she has a finger up. <coughs> okay, yeah, I believe that they were beating that baby for days on end or however long that she was in their possession. What caused them to beat her can't really speculate. Um, were were they on drugs? Were was there anything to talk about? <laughs> Erica, Erica had no prior rec criminal record at all. Some they never said anything about. Yes, yeah, so they never said anything about Sarita, but um, <laughs> whatever her name is. But Erica for sure had a clean record, and I guess they only kind of emphasize on Erica a lot more because she is like the person who was there when everything happened. She was She's the godmother. You know, everything just kind of circles around her because she like, well, the child knew you first. So, you know, I guess that's why I circled her, but she didn't have any kind of criminal record. So some kids just don't need to be around kids. Some folks just can't don't have right. patience with kids. Mm -hmm. One of the things when you talk about her not having a record, her attorney Christopher Lizzie emphasized, you know, she's never done anything like this. Well, we hope not. Uh, she doesn't have a record. When you do something like that. You it don't matter. Having a record doesn't matter. It doesn't speak to your character that you never had a ticket or that you've never been convicted. It doesn't matter. Like that, mm -hmm. it has no bearing because and I'm the sorry. Thing that you did do was the most horrible thing that you could possibly do. Being a child Just because she don't have a record don't mean she never did stuff. So, you know, people and not everyone gets caught with the things they do. For someone to be this intense. You did did some stuff. You got to be. It takes some serious guts to was it, be it was a baby. Rage for do you think was this rage against the mother? Was this like what was it? Because That's this, what I said. We'll never know. This you never know. Um, three year olds are annoying. Three year olds they don't they, they keep asking questions. They don't like to sleep. They uh, drink half a bottle of water. Um. They spill stuff. They eat crackers, and they and they have stuff on their face all the time. And sometimes they pee on the floor. And sometimes yes, they, they do. Pee on the floor. But at no point did I want to cause harm to my three-year-old. Uh, Never. Your nephews. Um, I know a three-year-old right now, and I just you Never. know he does stuff, and I just say he's thirty. He's like, a baby. What did you want him to do? He's three. He's a baby. That's my that's my saying. I'm like, it's a baby. <laughs> they don't know yet. They're, they don't they're know still baby. learning. Um, you <clears throat> guys have found, just like I found, that in a lot of these stories, and we talked about this before with other stories, sometimes there's not a lot of background on the other players in in you know in the drama. Um you get the, the most dramatic part of the story and then that remains the focus. And the most dramatic part of this story is the sentencing 
phase of their conviction. Now, um, Erica Butts entered an Alfred plea, and the Alfred plea just basically <clears throat> that she's not pleading guilty. She retains her sense of innocence. She doesn't, she doesn't have to plead guilty, but what she says, what Alfred plea says is that there is enough evidence that if it goes to trial, I'm likely to be convicted. I won't say that I'm guilty, but I'm likely to be convicted if it goes to trial. Um, Cunningham, <laughs> wait, well, that is a dumb, <laughs> that's a dumb ass plea. It's when cool. I saw that, I was like, this is so stupid. Yeah. Well, it's, but just, it's you like guilty. A, uh, just say I'm guilty. When you, right. When you get like a traffic ticket and they say, are you pleading guilty? You say, no, I'm pleading no low contendering. Basically, I'm not contesting the evidence that you have. Yeah. Say, yeah. Guilty, but I mean, I know it's, and it's, it's there. <clears throat> the optics look bad. Right. It looks bad. It looks really bad. Um, <clears throat> Oh, almost South Carolina is a death penalty state. So I don't know if they were doing that to avoid the death penalty. But anyway, they get to this part and the judge. And this is the part that everyone remembers. Because this is the part that I remember without even knowing Serenity's name. I remember mm -hmm. the antics of the courtroom. And in that courtroom, the judge reads them I mean, read them, read them. They get life. She did it in the most, in the most classiest way. She pretty much called them every name in the book without saying any of the words. Yes, because I remember thinking read. she read they. That's a church mother read. That's um, they get life in prison without the possibility of parole. When that is announced, you hear these women wailing. And my new Balling word today, Balling. Balling out and caterwauling. Okay, that's my new word this week. Um, <laughs> caterwauling. Uh, yeah, just think about what, just the sound of what caterwauling could be. That's what was going on in that courtroom. And they're screaming so much so that they have to be restrained in their chairs and wheeled out of the courtroom. Erica's mom, I don't know if it was Erica or... Yeah, that was, it was Erica's mom. Are screaming in the background. You yeah. have it was Erica Mama in the background. That's my baby. I got the check on her. That was her. Thankfully, Aisha Richardson and uh, Serenity, the rest of her, Serenity's family were not in attendance. They were not. Uh, she had moved to Detroit, Michigan, so they did not attend that um, part of the, the proceedings, thank God. But that's what you remember. And I will definitely be posting the videos of this. They fall out there is screaming. But my thing is blanking up down to the seat. And as if you're pleading, if your life means a damn. But where was your mercy when y'all were beating that baby? And I actually didn't even think it was real. I didn't. I'm sorry. I thought they were putting on just to try to look like they were so, you know, hard broke. Well, the, the the other girl, she def her stuff definitely. Um, looked, like she, she had not, not uh, Erica, the other one. Yeah, yeah, like she couldn't stand up, and they had to yeah. hold her and put her in yeah. a chair and, and push her out the courtroom. Eric, I don't know what Erica was doing. She was just laying on the ground. <laughs> Like under the know. under the desk, like yeah, like girl, what you doing? And uh, ah, 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 ah. that's why I, I was like, you weren't doing all that when that baby came up, did? Like you just you killed a kid. What are you shocked about? I just didn't understand. Like you, you killed a kid. You beat a child so like, much. What did you think? The cause of on. death was full body blunt force trauma. Like, what did you think? You thought they were just going to give you a slap on the wrist and give you probation? I think she did. I think they did. I think they literally thought it was like they were going to get away with something. Just I don't understand how. Y'all 20, at the time of the sentencing, they were 25 because they were sentenced in 2011. So you had to know that it wasn't going to go well for you. Like, Y'all, y'all beat this baby so bad that the only spots available on her body without a bruise were her feet. 
Yeah, I'm with Jackie. They probably was faking. And her armpits. That's just doing the most. Just it really was. Like, it, it was doing they're the gonna most. say, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were gonna react that way. I am so sorry. You're free to go to your parents. I think that's the most the, the, it's not the most tragic part, but it 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 adds It's not funny, to but it's it's like they really it I just it's ridiculous. It pissed me off because I was like anybody who needs to be falling out is that mama. Anybody. I'm like, what made you think you should be falling out for for murdering a child what makes you think what did you expect i'm That's sure the lawyers thing. already pretty much the lawyers already pretty much gave them you know they're gonna be 100 look we're looking at life and it's pretty strong right now right and you guys didn't go to trial so there is no jury to be sympathetic with you which which probably would have been worse so so you you I know the lawyers, they're, they're going to be 100%. That's just the way they have to do. They're not going to say, it looks like we could probably get away with this. No, they're not going to say uh, that. No. One of the, um, there's other cases where you see parents or people who have um, murdered children or hurt children. And when the sentence is passed down, they are absolutely shocked. Like, <clears throat> more I don't believe this. What is Now, we also had a story uh, very early when we started doing this last year was Michelle Blair. If y'all recall, and if you don't, go back to that episode. Michelle Blair killed two of her kids. Mm -hmm. Coldest bitch on the planet. Really? Michelle Blair had the opposite reaction because the judge would not immediately sentence her. So she had an equal but opposite reaction. So her her reaction, her her outburst wasn't because she didn't agree with the sentencing. Her outburst was because they wouldn't give her the death penalty, but yeah. there was no death penalty in Michigan. Um, but because she killed two of her kids in a very heinous way as well, tortured and probably buried them alive in a freezer. Um, but so I. She, she she knew what she did. She understood what she did. She had no qualms about what she did. She was very vocal about it. Um, her children suffered a very similar fate. They were older, but they still suffered a very similar fate as, as Serenity. But I just, with this story, again, most of the focus being on the antics in the courtroom, I don't understand what motivated them to do this. I just don't get it. No one's gonna know. I, I don't, and I wish that that there was something that I could find with her, with the mother. So if, you know, you can get an insight to her relationship with um, Erica and how that went because they were best friends and you were the child's godmother. So what happened in y'all's relationship? Was there some a breakdown in y'all's relationship that caused her to do this? Were her I don't know when, they had the first, when they went to court the first time, the initial time, the mom came and the I guess she started crying or you know something because the other girl was on video, so she couldn't see uh, Aisha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she kept saying, I'm so sorry, Aisha. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Erica kept saying that to, mm -hmm. to the mother. Mm -hmm. And I, whether you believe me or not, I still love you. And I'm like, this is not <clears> a <throat> time to talk about your love for me. Whether I believe it or not, you still love me. Because if, if you love me, you wouldn't kill my baby. Thank you. What? This is not the time to talk about that because. I can't I can't make myself believe that that's not a, you took the most precious thing to me and completely destroyed it but you love me so again I, I, I would speculate that something happened in their relationship that that triggered her something happened in the house but then maybe she thought about something else in her and Aisha's relationship but I would, but still, what happened? Because again, I don't believe that that happened over one day, the course of a day where you beat that child with a belt and she fell in the bathroom. But she had her mm -hmm. for three weeks. Supposedly, she was keeping her for three weeks while the mom was to help the mother because she was moving. 
But like I said, it might not have been nothing. Some folks just don't need to be around kids. Some it, folks just don't. They just don't have patience for kids, and they just don't need to be around no kids. Do you think it's kind of like a collective mind where one person starts doing something and the other one just kind of picks up on the energy and then they both do it? It could be. You know, it could I mean, be because wasn't the other one? The other one was a mother. She was a mother. Cunningham was a mother. She had her own children. Right. She she resented the fact that she had to watch the baby and she really didn't want to. Then just say, no, I, I can't watch your baby. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Was she jealous? Did she like Aisha? Because uh, she definitely give off lesbian vibes. So, did she like Aisha? Did Aisha find somebody and make her feel some type of way? I mean, it's it just... Did Aisha get smart with her? Did, I mean, like she said, it was three weeks. It was three weeks, and that wasn't an issue. So, the all of a sudden, over the course of a couple of days... Did the girlfriend think that they had a secret relationship, and so she took it out on the baby, and then Erica took it out on, the, you know, started beating the baby, too? Like, As proof that the, the relationship wasn't... Yeah, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, you don't know. We're just speculating, but I mean, it's definitely an option. All we know, you know, all we know is that baby suffered for however long she was in that care, and longer than what they're saying, and more happened than what they say. They have not talked. It's not adding up to a simple uh, whooping with a belt. It's not adding up to that. And who who whoops a three year old with a belt? No. But a three year old, you just clean up the pee and wash the clothes. That's it. That's, that's all you do. That's, that's it. They can't even hold it out. They can barely hold comps. I don't care how smart they are. They do not know nothing. So all you have to do is give a stern voice. Like that's it. That. Or that's literally it. Scares it scares them. It scares them already, and then they start crying. And um, I don't even do stern voice with my children. I just gave them a look. I'd be like, "You better." Get it. That worked. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. My son, my son is saying he's like, "No, mom, you do this thing like this." <laughs> I never had. I, I just give them a look. They, I, I just that's what I do. I could never be a three year old with a bill. No way. Mm -mm. Touch a socket, you get a pop on the hand. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand um, the motivation um, behind it. Um, it. It it makes no sense. Mm -mm. That's why we can't we we can't even figure it out because we don't even have those type of minds. So we can't even all we can is do is speculate. We don't have that type of mind or or moral compass to even lack think of okay, moral compass. Your lack of yeah to think of why you know to why it was okay to be a three year old to death. Yeah. There's nothing that a three year old can do. That that would elevate your rage like that to that point. A three year old, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing. Now, nothing. We're all mothers here, and we've all been through that stage. My kid used to keep me up all night talking, <laughs> all night talking. Why? Because she didn't want to go sleep in her room. She didn't want to go sleep in the room. With the bed that she asked and begged for. She asked and begged for this bed. I bought the bed, put the bed together, clean, you know, made her room, and she didn't want to sleep in that room. So if she thought that she could just keep me up all night, then she didn't have to go in there. Now, mind you, I'm getting off work. I'm going to school. I'm keeping my eyes open. You remember how on Tom and Jerry days to keep their eyes open with a toothpick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> While she's sitting there talking. I'm irritated. You know, I would be irritated because I'm tired. And I would raise my voice, but then I would like catch myself like, Ooh, she didn't do this. It's not her. Because now she's crying because I raised my voice. That's all it would take as punishment to a kid is to raise your voice. Never to strike out to the point where you beat a child to the point that you have to put, put them on ice. I just kept thinking about like her poor little cries, her little tears, which I think the judge mentioned. Like 
Y'all didn't care about her tears. You didn't care about her crying. You beat her through that. You beat her through that. Like, that's intense. That's intense. And then you went to go get ice. You could have took her to the hospital. You went to go get enough ice to fill a bathtub to put her in it. To fill a bathtub. To put her in it. probably was beating her, telling her to be quiet while they was beating her. So y'all did all of that. And then she stops breathing, and then you get scared. And why would uh, why would you use ice? They said to shock her, to shock her body temperature to come back up, like to, to come like that, like it's an electric shock. Like they what? thought it would be like an electric shock that would shock her body back to being alive. What that was media wood shop is going on here? Where did they go to school? Who told them that shit? I was like to shock her body back to life. <clears throat> what? And then the bleach. So they're gonna poison her too. They're gonna freeze her to death and poison her. So yeah, when her when she started her breathing starting in spares. Instead of taking her to the emergency room, well, let's go to Sonic and go get some ice. Let's go get all the ice we can get from Sonic. Fill the bathtub. They, they, they the bathtub. Could have been saved if they had called the ambulance. She wouldn't have died. But you waited so long to go get ice, to go get bleach, to call your mama, and all this stuff. She was dead. She would have been alive if you would have called 911. Well, by the time. Out to to be alive. Chance By the time to- they called the mom, the girl was dead because when the when because the mom called nine one one from Gooseneck. I'm not sure what the what the distance between Gooseneck and Somerville is. Um, let me find out. Let's Google. Um, but she called the the nine one one. When they get there, the baby is in rigor mortis already. So she that's all. Yeah, been dead. So that ice probably sped it up. Probably did. So we're going to look from Somerville. Let's see. Somerville. And then they would have got a child abuse charge. I don't know how many years that is, but it's definitely it's not. 16. It's nine miles, nine and a half miles from, from Somerville to Boots. <clears throat> so she was definitely dead. Nine and a half miles. So when she when the mother called nine one one from Gooseneck, that is the equivalent, Brandy, if you know, from calling from Arlington to the east side, or for me and you, Jackie, from downtown to South Dallas or whatever, from one end of Oak Cliff to the next, because like Oak Cliff is huge. So the baby had been dead. So they even waited after the baby was dead to call the mom and say to come up with. So now they're coming up with a story. They're coming up with a story because if you call 911 from nine miles away, there has to be the, the police get there and she's in rigor mortis. So that how long that baby had been dead for hours already. Yeah, it had been hours. For hours. So now you guys are trying to come up with a story. And by this time, Shanita gone. Shanita gone. She left. She skated out. You did so. You not still that much of a coward that you did that and then you ran. This is horrible. Even the little horrible. information that we have, it just makes it worse because you can't even come up with a. I don't think any explanation makes it better, but you, do, you just, 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 just doesn't make sense. Y'all just didn't have nothing to do. No sense at all. No sense at all. All right, y'all. I think we've kind of talked about this as much as we can without turning our stomach any further. So um, anything y'all want to talk about or bring up for the next five weeks or anything like that? Any new story ideas y'all got? No. Not yet. No. Um, I watch a lot of true crime like shows, but <laughs> yeah. I don't think that if they are based on true events, you got to go figure it out. Like, you got to go research, figure it out. 
One of the stories we are going to talk about here soon are the servant girl murders that happened in Austin, Texas in 1884 and 1885. Similar Jack the Ripper style murders were happening also in Atlanta. And what was it, the 1920s? That no one ever... Yeah, what, it, was, it was earlier than the 1920s. Was it the 1910s or something like that? Yeah. yeah. 1910s. Yes, yeah, so, for these black, black women. Black women. So the servant girl murders were black servants that were being murdered, Jack the Ripper style in 1884 and 1885 in Austin, Texas. Similar murders, Jack the Ripper style murders happening to black women, um, affluent black women or middle-class black women in Atlanta a few years later. So we're going to talk about those two things. Probably let's, let's just go ahead and talk about that next week and how those, if they have any sort of correlation to each other. Mm. And is this the same killer? Did Jack the Ripper come across the pond? Because of course, you know, they never caught him. Did he come across the pond and start doing it here? So next week, we'll talk about serving girl murders from Austin and then also similar murders, Jack the Ripper shot murders in Atlanta at the turn of the century. Killers got away with everything back then. They didn't have nothing. Like there's no forensic, no nothing. They could just kill well. Yeah, especially what? if they were people of color, so, mm -hmm. which is the reason why no one's ever heard of them. So we will talk about that next week. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but this week we will uh, post everything to um, Instagram, excuse me, Facebook and Instagram uh, with updates on this show. And of course you will see this show on Tuesday on our YouTube channel. So check that out. And don't forget to like and subscribe. So we do have some new subscribers for that. So thank you guys for, for joining us and um, continuing to be with us. Um, through all our antics. So um, we will go ahead and end the show and we will talk to y'all next week. Be safe, be blessed, and enjoy that second cup. Good night, y'all. Good night.